Hi, I'm DJ Sixmith. You're watching The Sit Down. Final season of Homeland, coming back to Showtime. Maury Sterling here with us. What's up, man? Oh, no. Thanks for having me. Look at this guy right here. Max in the field in season eight. Yeah, it's a whole different look. Uh, yeah, I wasn't expecting this when I watched the first no. episode. <laughs> Neither was I. <laughs> I, got, I, was, I was at the holiday party with some of the Showtime execs, and one of them came out to me and was like, yeah, you've got some really interesting stuff to do this year. So I was like, really? What? Okay, cool. And I read it, and I was like, oh, yeah, he wasn't kidding. You're like, this is much different than the normal uh, high-tech computer stuff you got going I, I feel like Max is sort of in the last few seasons, probably six, seven, started to get a little more into the field, mm -hmm. but it sort of end up being back behind the computer again. Right. This is going to be, a, yeah, this is a whole different ride. Yeah, because there's some dangerous situations that Max encounters. This is a whole different level. It's, it's just a, a, a level. minefield geopolitically of what goes on in season eight. So yeah. what was it like for you guys yeah. to, to put a bow on this and just to unpack a lot of stuff here? <sighs> I, I don't know how to start with that one. Um, it, the whole thing has been such a crazy ride. It's so and, and there's always that question mark of how long is it going to mm -hmm. go? Is it going to go? We've done rumors of it's over. It's this year. So when we heard it was final, there was some, there was some nostalgic sadness of sure. it's all going to end mostly because it's been so amazing to get to work with this caliber of people from Showtime, Fox, Alex, Howard, Leslie, all the people, the actors has just been, it's been, it's really raised the bar in terms of caliber. So that I will, I will just miss. Yeah, yeah. I hear you. So <coughs> let's talk about where you're at in your life prior to this. Like you, you get the idea of playing Max and Max I, is just a guy who's just hopping in here. So what was life looking like for you in season one of this? Uh, the sort of story, the story started, uh, I went into audition and I actually read for Virgil, the guy who played my mm, brother. Right. Um, so when I got the call to play Max, I was like, all right, what was that? And it was a few months after the audition. I was, I'd completely let it go. I thought it was whatever. And uh, so when I got the call, like, how do you feel about going to North Carolina? I was like, sure, great. For what? Like, what's like, up? This, yeah. this Homeland show. And I just hadn't either because I'm an idiot or because I don't know, <laughs> but reading the script, and I knew it was Claire and Mandy, and mm -hmm. that sounded cool, but the sort of what the show was going to become hadn't really landed yet. I mean, the script was great, it was taut, but what I loved about the first episode, too, and what I've always loved about Homeland is you don't really know what's going mm -hmm. on, and that's why it's cool. There isn't a lot, especially in those first episodes, it's always just setting up the field of what's going to come. Right. But it seems like, no, you're just getting... Um, so I, I just was going back to play this character, Max, and I didn't really know what, what it was. I was like, all right, cool, whatever, job's a job, cool, great. Um, yeah, so I think that answers the question. So when did you realize he was going to be one of the guys, like one of the people that had staying power in this series? I never did, which is what's been kind of this <laughs> fun adventure. Um, yeah, I never did. I never I never thought it was just like, oh, they called again, cool, I got to mm. go back and do this thing. and and. The story I tell to call myself out on my own arrogance and ego mm -hmm. was, I remember going to the wardrobe fitting for Max. I feel like I shouldn't say this in public, but too late. <laughs> and and putting on these, like, I just wanted to be like Matt Damon and the Jason yeah. Bourne series. I wanted to do action. I want to be a tough guy. All this, like, hey, la, la, la. And I'm in this, like, wardrobe fitting, putting on these, like, boxy clothes. And I was, I had a total, like, diva hissy fit really? on the inside. I didn't express it. But I was like, this is not what I want for my career. <laughs> this is not what I want to be. Just so unappreciative. Mm. And I'm so glad because for the first two years of getting to play this part, I just had to sit and listen. Mm. And I had to watch Claire Danes and Mandy Patinkin and Damian Lewis, all these amazing actors, just do their thing. It was the best thing that could have happened to me. So was this diva moment internally early on? Like what season? It was, was like it? in the pilot. Okay. It was the pilot. Right. It was it was day so one. So you had no idea like, what was to come, but it's like it's the I, glasses, it's, it's the whole the dress. Thing. You're like, this you're is what I want in my figuring career. Figuring it yeah. out, your ego's clashing yeah. with it, and you're all like, meh. Uh, <laughs> and I'm so glad because he's I just character has taught me so much I think about being a human yeah um, and it's been and I think to get back to your question there was no time then there was really no point that I thought eight years down the road mm -hmm. I'd be doing this and wearing this and yeah. just and even still a part of the show <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm sure it's taught you a lot about loyalty also because Max's relationship with Carrie is is really special and really unique so when did you start to sense that was developing and how crazy is it that there's just this ultimate loyalty like regardless of anything one of my favorite lines you, know, you have these moments where I think the writers are living in a world where they kind of maybe get the big picture. Mm -hmm. Maybe not. Uh, I think they were <laughs> flailing a lot of times. Like, what do we do now? Um, but uh, there's a line, I think it's in season three. It was Rupert's first season mm -hmm. 
where Carrie and Virgil and Max are walking and, and Carrie's saying something along the lines of like, do people believe in me? And she's having one of her crisis moments. And my, Max sort of from the background pat, pipes up and says, well, I always believed in you. Mm. And that was one of those moments where I went, oh, this guy sees, I think Max is one of Max's strengths is he sees things. Right. He kind of gets the field. And he's really honest in how he uh, internalizes the world and people. Like he really kind of he gets it. And, and he, got, he gets Carrie, good and bad. He gets Carrie sort of, he understands her even in her sort of her bipolarity and all that. He doesn't, that doesn't necessarily freak him out, but he also totally gets the consequences of that as well, mm. so he's, which means he'll call her out and pipe up and say what you're doing is wrong. Right, and somebody has the <coughs> full range of perspective because other characters are, are very singularly focused. Mm -hmm. Like Carrie's mental illness is obviously a huge thing, but like especially when she has Franny, like it's hard to balance that whole thing. And like you're in the mix with Franny too, and like there's a lot going on there. So like your character kind of steadies everyone there. Mm -hmm. This is what it seems like, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that's a good way of putting it. I yeah. think he brought heart. He brings a step because of his like trying to play with all the pieces as honestly as he can. Mm -hmm. I think they're I think yeah, that kind of does bring a kind of steadiness to it. And I think the other wild part about the show is like TV has just dramatically changed since the start of it. I mean, you guys on Showtime in 2011 compared to 2020, like how was it that you were able to cut through all these years amidst all the crazy changes? That's a good question. Um, I I, th I think from the get-go there I think there was just a real commitment. The way I've always described it there was a commitment in the room. One of the things that always blew me away about Homeland is the writers are all generals. Mm -hmm. They were all showrunners. I mean, a lot of them were top That's of really their important. game thing. Yeah. And the fact that they could all sit in a room together and hash this out is impressive to me. Like, they all knew that I think they were, I'm, I'm guessing they were pretty excited about the ideas they were getting into and that they were getting to do this show. Um, and the thing I've always described that Homeland has is they were just, they were, they were, they were unafraid of making us feel uncomfortable right. as the audience. They did not try and solve problems for us. They made the audience sit with discomfort, even in the smallest of moments. I mean, even for Max's character, mm -hmm. who was kind of a nothing in the pilot right. as an actor, I was like, oh, these moments are really interesting for even a nothing kind of character. There's a great attention to detail there. A, 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 amazing attention to detail. Yeah. Like, and, and I know people have been pissed off. I know audiences, you can't make everybody happy and there are things that are overlooked or not done well and that, that just kind of happens. Right. But I've always thought they really cared about detail. And, and they, when an actor comes on set and says, hey, what about this? They will listen. Mm -hmm. They might be like, oh, can you just right. do this? Like, what's this guy saying? <laughs> <laughs> it's not that important. Just, do just let them vent. Just do it. But, mm -hmm. yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. but, they, but, they, but they value their actors as well and what they're working on right and that's cool one of the fascinating things for me after the fact is the the 24 connection mm -hmm. with all this and how they didn't want to make it 24 yeah. and you did a couple episodes of 24 so what yep. are the biggest differences between 24 and homeland <sighs> a speed mm -hmm. i think would be maybe sort of adrenaline a different kind of adrenaline 24 was now 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 right. now now go 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 move 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 and homeland has is the sort of opposite rhythm of let's just mm -hmm. kind of sit here and We're not out. spell it out yeah. for you and it's we always said my wife and I would watch one. She she like would pace like we were we were a part of the show. It's still like, what's gonna happen? Uh, but it always felt like that. Especially it, we always said Homeland was weird because the episodes felt like they were about fifteen minutes long. Mm. Like they were so taut. Yeah, and yet they're packed with stuff. Yeah, definitely true. So when you think about the arc of the show going into season eight now. What are some big things you want people to start thinking about as the show kind of comes to its conclusion? Oh, I don't know. I don't. I, I think it's. I hope we. You know. I hope again we give you a good ride for the last the last season of getting more into sort of the geopolitical stuff that's going on in the world and and uh, yeah. I don't know. Um, I hope people have enjoyed it and 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 that we'll give them a good good adventure for the last the last last go round. You spent a lot of time <clears throat> with Claire and Mandy. What sticks out the most about that experience? I've gotten to know both of them. You know, it's been a kind of a slow getting to know them both. Uh, the word of, people always ask me about Claire, and I always say she's an absolute pro. She's taught me so much about being a professional, and she's been doing it forever. Um, I just, I've watched her a few times, like how she's handled the set. I think she's, as a person, she's just really comprehensive. Mm -hmm. She's curious, she's interested, she's kind. And she's, she's I remember trying to make small talk with her I was like sort of nervous. Like, I want to talk to Claire. <laughs> hey, Claire. And we're about to do some scene. And I'm like, so how's it going? And she just looked at me like, 
Oh man. Well, and I was like, yeah, not now, dude. Not now. <laughs> like, not now. What are you doing? Like, she, <laughs> not the moment. Not the moment. And she's, because she's fierce. Yeah. She's just ferocious about when she's in it and what she brings is, uh, I, I think I mentioned it in a different interview, but it, uh, the, the work she did at the end of season one, I'd never seen mm. anything like that before in terms of how far she's willing to go with no apology about sort of the, what this mental illness can look like. And Mandy is just, I just love him. I mean, I love them both. Mm. Mandy, Mandy and I have gotten to spend time, more time in the last couple seasons, and he's just a, he, he'll be the first one to tell you he's difficult, and that's what mm -hmm. I love about him. Yeah, like, that's yeah, really interesting about yeah, him. Yeah, he totally, totally owns it. I mean, yeah. He totally owns it. <laughs> and that's who he is. You know, he's just absolutely honest and raw, and, and, and he's taught me so much about being an artist. Mm -hmm. Like, it's okay to ask for what you want to ask for. Right. To, if you need to do this to be and get your thing right, do it. Like, just do it. And both of them are like that. But it's really important. cool about not judging the process, just showing up with your A game and do whatever you need to do yeah. to, to, to get it done and, and work on your performance and be a pro. You guys have done some crazy scenes this entire series. Are there any in particular that stick out to you as just like the wildest, like I can't believe we pulled this off, I can't believe Max was in some of these things? I think season eight, this, this season yeah. for me is the most of that. There's a lot of, there was, there was just, I mean, it just, I mean, financially the shows, it, 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 it started off, I think, as a real, uh, simple terms, like really just two people talking in a room, mm -hmm. like really tight, independent movie kind of feel. Right. Um, and and it's just grown and grown, and as it's gotten more successful, it gets more budget, it can get bigger, and it was eight days of shooting, you know, to 12 to 13, and so this season is, there's some stuff that, that I gotta do. It was just like it's sitting on top of a mountain and Big Bear going, I can't believe you know, this is amazing. Mm. This is huge, and the coordination, it's, it's wild, it's cool. So Homeland's been a big hit. You've come a long way since Mill Valley. So thinking back to your early days, what are some of your favorite memories from growing up there? Uh, it was a great place to be a kid. I always said it was a real spoiled childhood. I had I had 20 different moms. You got, we were, Mount Tam is in the backyard. It was unbelievably beautiful. It was the 70s. It was, uh, it was a cool place to grow up, yeah, yeah. What should people it. know if they've never checked it out before there? What are some <clears> of the big things that you love to do? Uh, uh, Mill Valley and Marin is great because you've got, I mean, it's sort of the whole Bay Area there. I always said it's got really good feng shui because uh, you've got the city if you want to go do stuff in the city, but then you've got Marin Headlands, you've got Mere Woods, you've got Stinson Beach. There's surfing, hiking, outdoorsy stuff. There's cool, there's great food and art. Get up to Point Reyes and Inverness and see the coast. There's whale watching and, and a lot of nature is what I really took for granted, you know. What's it been like for you to see San Fran kind of blow up these last 20, 30 years? Like, it must be pretty wild for you. It's pretty wild. I mean, I, I get to travel a lot, the sort of the way cities are changing from just massive influx and wealth. There's always good and bad. You, you want to you support development, but there's always sort of a cost in terms of how it pushes people out and changes the landscape. So good, bad, I guess. But a little different from Morocco for season eight. A little <laughs> different from Morocco. A <laughs> little different from Morocco. Yeah, Morocco is a different world. Love being there. Love yeah. to travel. Uh, but yeah, different. You must have been able to travel all over. I didn't show, do as right? much as I would have liked to. We mm -hmm. got up to getting up to the Atlas Mountains and shooting the Atlas Mountains was great because it just, I don't know why, but there was, when I think of Morocco, that is not what I think of. Mm -hmm. You know, we were driving into Marrakesh and you look up and you see these snow-capped peaks. Wow, and yeah, that's I different. I didn't put that together just because I hadn't done my research, but still the visual was amazing. So getting to be up there and I spent a lot of time in a ranch in Montana, so anything that's got wheat fields and horses and farms, I'm totally into, and that was really cool. Marrakesh is, is just dynamic and colorful and wild. Wife came out and we got down to Tangier for a day. There's oh, wow. still, Hannah and I'm just talking about it, there's still so much I didn't see, but mm. uh, I'd go back. It's an amazing country. That's awesome. Yeah, so amazing. have you been able to <clears throat> close a chapter on Max yet, or do you kind of need to let I, season eight go before that's finally official? Uh, luckily, I finished this, and I dove right into rehearsal for a play, mm. and I played Stalin. So, oh, that's, a, that's a good transition like there. A complete <laughs> change of gears. So I think that helped kind of jump into something creatively. I There's always sadness. There's always sort of nostalgia. It's been such an amazing thing to be a part of, but mostly I just feel... I just keep saying this like a little bit cheesy, but it's just the gratitude of getting mm -hmm. to have done it is, is would you like to go on for a couple of years? Sure, and I'm, rep, you know, it's always exciting to see what's sort of coming next. Yeah, yeah. no doubt. Yeah, All yeah, right, yeah. So, good to meet you, man. Awesome. Real pleasure. Showtime, yeah. final season, Sunday on Showtime. For Maury, I'm DJ. See you next time here on The Sit Down.